A blessed morning to everyone and welcome to our online combined Sunday school. And this is the Sunday school of Baptist Bible Church Santa Mesa. So we welcome everyone, every member who is joining us as well as our special guest, special visitors. Welcome as we study the Word of God for this morning. Kindly turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 po ang ating aaralin natin. Ang aaralin natin at tayo ay nasa lesson 14 ng ating series at pinag-aaralan po natin ang early church. So as we continue our lesson series, let me ask you some questions that you can think of. First question is this, are you sharing to others about Christ? Are you sharing to others about Christ? What if you get arrested and imprisoned for sharing Christ? Will you still continue to share about Christ despite imprisonment, despite persecution, despite suffering? We are studying about the early church in our Sunday School series and we know that the apostles shared Christ with all their heart and with all their might. They shared Christ until their very last breath. The Bible tells us that one of those apostles, James, he was killed by the sword. And we understand that two of them were killed being crucified. With one of them, some sources say that he was crucified upside down. One of these apostles, as tradi tradition says, was stabbed by a spear. One of them was whipped until he died. One of them was stoned to death. And one of them was beheaded. So may, makikita natin na itong mga apostoles na to ay hindi tumigil sa pagturo tungkol kay Heso Kristo hanggang sa kanilang huling hininga. At makikita natin na sila ay pinatay. They were killed not because they were criminals. Hindi dahil may ginawa sila masama. These apostles were killed, were persecuted simply because they chose to obey God. And the title of our lesson for this morning is, We Ought to Obey God. We Ought to Obey God. So kindly turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 5 as we continue our series. But before we start reading, please join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another morning that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word with the fellow saints as well as our special guest, we ask, Lord, that your name, not, no, no name, but your name, be glorified in our Bible study. We ask for the Holy Spirit to guide every person who is listening to help us, Lord, to understand the things that are being taught in your word. We ask, Lord, that you expose the sins that we have, uh, we are not aware of. And, and we ask, Lord, that you help us apply the truths that we are going to learn from your word in our lives. All these things I pray in the name of our Lord and our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, uh, sa ating pagpapatuloy, kindly turn to Acts chapter 5. And we are going to start reading verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So makikita po natin for our first point that the apostles were arrested and imprisoned. The apostles were arrested and imprisoned. At makikita natin yan sa mga binasa natin. Now, for a short background, makikita natin na yung church by this time has stood out among the people. At bakit sila parang sila ay bukod tangi sa mga tao sa kanilang paligid. It is because they share a special message that many people have not yet heard. A message that seemed strange to them and this is the message of Jesus Christ. They are preaching Jesus Christ who was raised by God. They are preaching Jesus Christ who is the long-awaited Messiah of the Jewish people. They are preaching Jesus Christ who was resurrected by God, who rose triumphantly from the grave and was seen by many people. And as they continued to preach Christ, God continued to bless the apostles. He empowered them with healing, with gifts of healing so that the apostles were able to heal many people in the name of Jesus Christ. 
through the power of God. At makikita natin from our last lesson that the early church was very special because they were united in faith. They worshiped the same God and they followed the same Lord. Gaya nga na sinabi sa early verse sa Acts 5, the believers were magnified and many people were added by the Lord to His church. Parami ng parami itong mga taong to na sumasampalataya kay Heso Kristo. At itong mga religious leaders, itong mga high priest, itong mga Sadducees na nabasa natin, ayaw nila itong nangyayari. Ang sabi dun sa verse, they were filled with indignation or in other words, they were very envious or they were very jealous at what is happening. The believers were magnified and they continually preached Christ who was crucified. Christ who was crucified, the rejected prophet, yet He rose again. The resurrected Christ was preached and the religious leaders did not support this idea of resurrection. Hindi sila naniniwala ng mga tao na namatay ay maaaring mabuhay. Ngunit ito si Jesus Christ na sinabi niyang mabubuhay ako, siya ay nabuhay muli. And that is why what did they do with the apostles? They arrested the apostles. They imprisoned the apostles or put them in a common prison. Sa mga kapwa ko mananampalataya, hindi tapat tayo nagugulat kapag ito ay nangyari or nangyayari kahit sa panahon ngayon. Let us not be surprised if people oppose us whenever we preach Jesus Christ. And that is why napapanahon nga ngayon, kinakailangan natin maalala na ipagdasal ang mga kapwa mananampalataya na uh, sinasalubong itong grabbing persecution mula sa mga tao. So we see here that the apostles were arrested and, pre- and imprisoned because they preached Jesus Christ. Now for the next part of our outline, we will see that the apostles were released and instructed. Matapos silang makulong, ay sila ay napakawalan. Paano? Basahin natin. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. So what happened was like what we see in many of our modern day movies or TV shows. This was like a prison break. They broke out of prison. But the thing here is that they did not break out with their own power. It is God who was responsible for their release. Ang mga apostoles na ikinulong ay napunta sa temple dahil pinagbuksan sila ng pinto ng angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord opened the doors and released them. So we can see here that God was still with the apostles na kahit sila ay nakulong, kahit sila ay inaresto, makikita natin na ang Diyos ay kasama nila dahil sila ay pinakawalan. Paano sila nakawala sa kulungan ng sila lang? Eh sila yung nasa loob. ba? Nakawala sila. The apostles were released because the angel of God opened the door. And not, and we have to understand that they were not just released. The angel also gave them an order or instruction from God. Meron pa silang pag-uutos. Basahin ulit natin yung verse 20. Ano yung pag-uutos na yun? Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. So makikita natin mga kapatid, they were commanded to speak to the people about their lives. At alam naman natin ang kanilang uh, buhay ay pinanghahawakan nila sa kanilang buhay itong mensahe tungkol kay Jesus Christ. The message that these people preach is none other but Christ. And we can see from our previous lessons as we study the book of Acts, nasa lesson 14 na tayo, pero sa chap- nasa lesson 14 na tayo, pero nasa chapter 5 pa lang tayo, at makikita natin sa ating bawat pinag-aralan na lesson ay laging na taas ang pangalan ni Heso Kristo. Sa kanilang mensahe, ano man ang mangyari sa kanila, laging na itataas ang Diyos. Laging na itataas ang pangalan ng kanilang tagapagligtas at walang iba kundi si Heso Kristo. Makikita din natin dito ang banal na Espiritu na binigay ng Diyos Ama na kumikilos, na kumikilos sa bawat mananampalataya. Grabe. So itong uh, instruction tungkol sa Diyos ay kinakailangan nilang ituro doon sa temple. Sumunod ba ang mga apostoles? Yes, they obeyed. They went to the temple and they continued to preach their message. Verse 22 says, But when the officers came, so nagtipon-tipon na yung mga 
uh, high priest at yung mga kasama nila. Sabi nga sa verse 21, di ba, yung mga yung council, the senate of the children of Israel. So nagtipo na sila at pinatawag na nila itong mga apostoles na akala nila ay nakakulong pa sa prison. But verse 22 says, But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, wala na, nasa templo na. They returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shot with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. Meron pa pala mga tagabantay, hindi man lang nila nakita. Hindi man lang nila nalaman na, na yung kanilang mga binabantayan ay wala na sa loob ng kulungan. And the keepers standing without before the doors, but when we had opened, ibig sabihin na sarado ulit, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them where unto this would grow. Nako! Nasa na yung mga kinulong natin? Maaaring iniisip nila. Ano kayang mangyayari ngayon na yung mga kinulong natin ay nawawala? Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. So again, we want to emphasize that this is a miracle. This is something that has been made possible because of God. And because God allowed this to happen, this is a testimony that the apostles were of God. Hindi sila basta mga baliw lang na nagtuturo tungkol sa isang Mesayas na hindi naman totoo. They are preaching the true Messiah whom the Jews were waiting for. And their message was verified by the miracles that they did. And now this special event, this prison break also verifies that they are of God. Yung mga nakulong ay napunta na sa templo at kinabahan ito mga religious leaders. Nagkinabahan sila kung ano maaari mangyari dahil ang kanilang mga ipinakulong na dapat ay i-interviewin nila ay napunta sa temple. The religious leaders were furious. And that is why we proceed to our next point. The apostles were arrested and confronted. Let's read verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So makikita natin, at tila ba sa ating binasa, mararamdaman natin yung galit nitong mga religious leaders. They were apparently furious. And they reminded the apostles, sabi niya sa verse 28, Did we not straightly command you, hindi ba inutos namin sa inyo, not to speak of Jesus Christ? They reminded the apostles about their threats. Diba? At kinul dahil nga kinulong na sila, ina-expect nila na yung mga apostles ay titigil na sa kanilang pag preach tungkol kay Jesus Christ. Kaya pinapaalala nila ito. No, minsan kinakailangan takutin lang yung Kristiyano, hindi titigil na yung Kristiyano. But Peter, Peter and the apostles, they did not stop preaching about Christ. What is the response of Peter? Oo nga, hindi naman ganun yung response ni Peter. Basahin natin verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Grabe no, si Peter, no? He took the opportunity to again preach the message that he loved so dear. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Nasabi na niya ito sa kanila, pinatay niyo si Jesus Christ, inuulit na naman niya. Ye slew him and you hanged him on a tree. Him hath God exalted with His right hand to be a prince, to be a captain, and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are His witnesses of these things. Nakita namin itong mga bagay na sinasabi namin. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. The believers were taking advantage of every opportunity to preach Christ na kahit na sila ay galing sa kulungan at ngayon ay nakasalubong na naman nila itong mga tao na maaari na naman silang dakipin at ikulong hindi sila tumigil na i-preach si Jesus Christ we must understand that the religious authorities could hurt again these apostles could arrest them 
and eventually kill them at any moment. But did they back down? They did not back down. Peter preached a very wonderful message, the message about Christ, the message about the risen Savior. This message about Christ was definitely worthy to be proclaimed, not just back then, but even until now. Every believer is commanded to teach others about Christ. Ito yung habili ni Jesus Christ. Shall we say habili? Ito yung kanyang pag-uutos bago siya umalis. Bago siya mag-ascend into heaven. So whenever any other human tells the believer to stop preaching in the name of Christ, the believer's answer should be, we ought to obey God rather than men. And that is the message that we want to highlight for our lesson. The message of Christ is worthy to be proclaimed. And that is why we must always obey the call to teach others about Jesus Christ. Napakasimple lang ng binasa natin na passage pero madami tayong may a-apply dito. The first application is that we should not be surprised when humans oppose the good news about Christ. We should not be surprised when humans oppose the good news about Christ. Nakita naman natin yung reaction nito mga religious leaders na hindi naniniwala kay Jesus Christ. Pinaaresto nila, pinatigil nila yung mga apostoles sa kanilang pamamahayag na salita ng Diyos. Gusto pa nilang patayin. Diba? Grabe ang opposition ng utak ng isang tao na hindi nananampalataya kay Christ. Grabe ang kanyang opposition sa Ebanghelyo tungkol kay Jesus Christ. And we understand that the Bible tells us that sinners have minds that are blinded. Ang bawat uh, taong makasalanan na hindi pa sumasampalataya sa Diyos, na hindi sa Diyos, ay tila ba mga taong bulag, sila ay spiritually blinded. At ganun din tayo mga mananampalataya bago tayo maging man- mga mananampalataya. Bago tayo maging ganap ng mga mananampalataya, ano nangyari sa atin? Ano ang, ano ang estado ng ating buhay? We were, before we became believers, we were also blinded. Our minds were also hostile against God. And the things that we hear from Scripture do not make sense because we are not of the Spirit. Either we trusted in our own righteousness We trusted in our own religion for salvation. We trusted in our own church for salvation. Or we simply rejected the truths about Christ. We trusted in our own unscriptural, uh, unscriptural beliefs. So, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na nalalayo tayo dito sa mga religious leaders na to dahil tayo ay nalalapit sa kanila. Before our conversion, we were like the religious leaders who strongly opposed the message of Jesus Christ. But thank God, at kaya kinakailangan natin pasalamatan Panginoon palagi, we must thank God for the, the message about Christ that we received. We thank God that we are saved by Him. We thank God. We thank God for the salvation that is provided for us. Pinasasalamatan natin ng Panginoon na siya ay kumilo sa ating buhay. May mga ginamit siya mga tao upang ipakita sa atin ang salita ng Diyos, ang tinuturo ng Diyos tungkol sa Ebanghelyo, tungkol sa Diyos na banal na nagbigay ng paraan para ang mga makasalanan na hindi nila kayang iligtas ang kanilang sarili ay maaaring maligtas. Salamat sa Panginoon dahil hindi na tayo nagpapatuloy na bulag gaya na itong mga religious leaders na to na nag-oppose sa mga apostoles. We should not be surprised whenever we preach the message of Christ that people would reject it. So ano sinabi ni Peter sa kanila? Balikan natin yung chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. Isang manunubos, isang tagapagligtas. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are His witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them that obey Him. If you are thinking of any way or any method to present the gospel, this is a wonderful gospel presentation by Peter. Diba? At para sa mga maraming tao na nakikinig nung panahon na yon, ito ay pag-uulit. This is a rehearse, rehearsal of Uh, this is a re- repetition of what Peter has previously announced before this message about Christ. 
Kaya para sa mga kasama natin na nakikinig na hindi pa sumasampalataya sa Panginoong Hesus bilang kanilang tagapagligtas, ito po ang kinakailangan nating gunitain mula sa, sa Scripture. This is what we have to understand and accept from Scripture. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Ang Diyos na totoo, ang Diyos na lumikha ng lahat ay isang banal na Diyos, isang tuwid na Diyos. At lahat ng mga tao na sinner, ibig sabihin yung mga tao na lumalabag sa kanyang kautusan, yung mga tao na hindi naaabot ang kanyang pamantayan dahil siya ay isang banal na Diyos, ay kinakailangan maparusahan. At lahat ng mga tao, walang excuse ay nagkasala. Ano ang parusa? Sabi sa Roma 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. At kaya sinasabi natin na ang mensahe tungkol kay Heso Kristo ay isang mabuting balita, isang gospel, isang good news. Dahil, what does Romans 6.23 say? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8 tells us, But God commended His love toward us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for sinners. When Jesus Christ died on a cross, it was not an accident. It was the plan of God. The plan of God that, that, that would allow sinners who could not save themselves to be able to be saved, to have hope, to have eternal life. Why? Because it is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who was on the cross. It was Jesus Christ who took on the punishment for sinners. He was the sacrifice. He was the Lamb of God who absorbed, who took the wrath of a holy God against sinners. But He did not stay dead. Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. God raised Him on the, from the dead. As Peter is saying, nakita namin na buhay si Jesus Christ. Romans 5 1 tells us, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wala tayong kailangan gawin. Wala tayong kailangan na sabihin para sa ating sariling kalakasan ay maabot natin or makamit natin ang pagpapatawad ng Diyos dahil si Jesus Christ ang nagbayad ng ating utang para sa atin. Si Jesus Christ ang naglapit sa isang makasalanan at isang, mas- isang banal na Diyos. We are justified. We are treated as though we did not sin because Jesus Christ was the one who was treated as a sinner though He did not sin. And that is why I invite you who are, who are listening right now If you are listening and if you have not professed your faith in Jesus Christ as your only way of salvation, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Jesus Christ. So what do you do? You have to acknowledge what the Bible says. You have to acknowledge that the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and the sins that we have committed are uh, abomination against God. God abhors the sins that we do. And was, we must have a changed mind regarding the sins, regarding our status as sinners. We must understand that we need hope and that we can secure salvation only through Christ. And that is why we must turn to Jesus Christ for our salvation. We must not trust ourselves. We must not trust our works. We turn to Jesus Christ for salvation in humble and reliant faith. Kinakailangan nating sumampalataya kay Heso Kristo lamang para sa ating kaligtasan. Yun ang sinasabi ng Biblia na tugon sa Ebanghelyo. I would not be surprised if some of you have are listening to this and you reject this message. This is what the Bible tells us. The sinners who have non-spiritual minds are opposing the things that are of God. Kung mananampalataya, nagsishare ka ng gospel, do not be discouraged if the person did not accept Christ. This is a normal reaction of a person who is a sinner. So what do we do next? The message that we want to emphasize is that the message of Christ is worthy to be proclaimed. We must not be surprised if other people reject it. We must continue to preach it though. Verse, uh, application number two, we must pray for the persecuted brethren who choose to stand up for Christ. Because the message of Christ is worthy to, pre- to be proclaimed, many Christians around the world are still standing up for Christ, still preaching His Word despite the persecution, despite the suffering that they are dealing with right now. Following Christ might end up being painful and deadly for many of us. 
Not all of us will enjoy a life wherein we're just faithful Christians attending church. Many, if not most of us, would suffer. Would suffer because we are Christians. Diba? Buti sa Pilipinas, hindi natin masyadong napapansin yung persecution, lalong-lalo na kung masarap ang ating buhay bilang mga Kristiyano. Pero maraming lugar sa mundo ang ang uh, kinalalagyan ng mga Kristiyano na sila ay pinaparusua, pinaparusahan at sinasaktan dahil lamang sila ay Kristiyano at tumatayo sila para kay Kristo. By the grace of God, these believers around the world Even though they were suffering persecution, they are willing to obey God rather than man. Many believers around the world are being persecuted right at this very moment. Yet here we are, taking our freedom for granted. Marami mga mananampalataya ang bawat minuto sa kanilang buhay, hindi nila alam, maaaring may pumasok sa kanilang pamamahay at patayin sila. Dakpin ang kanilang mga kababaihan sa kanilang pamilya at pagsamantalahan. Patayin ang kanilang mga anak sa kanilang harapan. Pero hindi sila handa na isuko si Jesus Christ. Handa sila na tumayo para kay Jesus Christ at panindigan ang kanilang pananampalataya. Pero ito tayo, tayo mga mananampalataya na hindi humaharap sa ganong klasing persecution na ginagawa natin. We take our religious freedom for granted. Walang pakialam sa pagtitipon ng mga kapatiran. Sinasabi nila na sila ay ligtas. Save na ako, okay na yun. Kahit uh, okay lang, since pinatawad na ako ng Panginoon, wala na akong pakialam sa simbahan. May mga mananampalataya kuno na ganun ang klase ng kanilang pag-iisip. Walang pakialam sa gawain, walang pakialam sa pamamahayag ng Ebanghelyo. Ilang taon na ang nakalipas, hindi pa nagpe-pray. Hindi kinakausap ang Diyos, hindi pinupuri ang Diyos. Hindi pinapahayag ang Ebanghelyo ni Jesus Christ, pero Kristiyano daw siya. At para naman sa ating mga Kristiyano na medyo napapa-relax, 'di ba? Huwag nating isentabe yung mga yung religious freedom na ini-enjoy natin ngayon. Gamitin natin 'to para sa kaluwalhatian ng Diyos. Let us use this religious freedom that we are enjoying to proclaim Christ and further the message about Christ. And that is why we must strive to edify the church, to encourage fellow believers, to learn about God. Sa natin ito matututunan? Maari ang matutunan natin sa ating sarili? Yes, if we study the Bible. But the Bible tells us that as believers, we are also to enjoy the fellowship of the church. Wala nang pakialam sa kapatiran ang marami sa mga Kristiyano, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ngayon. A-attend lang ng Sunday school. Ano na, 30 minutes na, sakalang papasok, patapos na, application na. Hindi lang yun basta na late, ha? iba ang na late doon sa nagpapalit. Pasensya na po mga kapatid, pero kinakailangan nating address yung ganyang mga bagay. Hindi lang sa Sunday school nangyayari yan, pati sa morning worship service at sa evening worship service, sa Wednesday prayer meeting. Ito ay pagtitipon ng mga mananampalataya. Ang church na tinutukoy sa Biblia ay hindi gusali. Ang church na tinutukoy sa Biblia ay isang asembleya, isang pagtitipon ng mga mananampalataya. Ano ang trato natin sa simbahan? Ano ang trato natin sa ating mga kapatiran? Madami mga Kristiyano sa iba't ibang parte ng mundo ang nagnanais ma-enjoy itong religious freedom natin. But we take it for granted. So as we think about those people, let us have the desire to pray for them. Let us pray for the church around the world who are being persecuted. Ito yung hinarap nila ng mga apostoles nung sila ay nanindigan para kay Kristo, sila ay inaresto, sila ay kinulong. Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, He asked the believers, brethren, pray for us, na ang Ebanghelyo ay maihayag, na magawa namin ang aming mga tungkulin. Pinagdadasal ba natin ang ating mga kapwa mananampalataya? Paano tayo mag- magkakaroon ng oras para ipagdasal ang ating mga kapwa mananampalataya? Mas pinipili pa natin mag-enjoy sa mga bagay na walang katuturan. I-assess natin, tayo, tayo lang makakaintindi ng ating sitwasyon kung ginagawa ba natin ng maayos or nan, nabubuhay ba tayo ng maayos bilang mga Kristiyano. Acts 1.14 tells us, The believers all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. Ginagawa pa ba natin to With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with His brethren. Why pray? We pray not to inform or instruct God, but 
we must understand that whenever we pray, we are acknowledging who is in control. We are acknowledging who is sovereign. We are acknowledging who sits on the throne. So when the time comes that we are also persecuted, we have this assurance that brethren around the world are also praying for us. Let me share the story of a man named Adoniram Judson. Adoniram Judson knew the risk of preaching Christ in Burma, but he still went with his family. Adoniram Judson suffered imprisonment and torture. He lost his wife. He lost his child. He was the one who buried them. And Adoniram Judson died a very sick man. The question is, did Adoniram Judson waste his life? The answer is no. God used the life of Adoniram Judson. God used his ministry so that thousands of Burmese people and people in Burma at that time, so that these people were able to hear the gospel and these thousands of people were converted through the ministry of Adoniram Judson. The word of God was understood in their local tongue. And who translated that? Adoniram Judson. Adoniram Judson said, The love of Christ, boundless in its breadth, infinite in its length, fathomless in its depths, and measureless in its height. In these deserts, let me labor. On these mountains, let me tell how he died, the blessed Savior, to redeem a world from hell. Maaring hindi tayo nakakaranas ng persecution sa panahon ngayon, pero madami mga mananampalataya ay uma- nakakaranas ng persecution. Just watch the news. Just open your social media. Just check the news. Makikita natin yung mga Kristiyano dito na maaring patayin at any time. Let's pray for them. Third application, we must bear the fierce opposition whenever we preach Christ. Let us bear the fierce opposition whenever we preach Christ. Gaya nga na sinabi natin kanina at nakita natin mula sa binasa natin, hindi lahat ng tao ay tatanggapin ang mensahe ni Jesus Christ. At kaya naman may, ito ay magdudulot ng persecution sa ibang mga mananampalataya. At kung tayo ay dadating sa punto na kapag pinapahayag natin si Jesus Christ, ay tayo ay lalabanan ng mga tao, tayo ay paparosahan at babanggain ng mga tao, we must bear this opposition. We must not stop the apostles knew that preaching Christ meant suffering and persecution. Sa tingin nyo, hindi nila alam na papatayin sila at paparosahan sila? Alam nila to. Noong una nga, iniwan nila si Kristo, pero noong nakita nila si Kristo na buhay, handa na silang mamatay para sa Kanya. Christ said in Luke 9, any man will, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Are we taking our cross daily? Are we following Christ as we take up our cross? The problem with many Christians is that they are not expecting persecution. They do not realize persecution because they are too comfortable. They are too comfortable in their lives. Yes, we must acknowledge that God has given us this desire to survive. God has given us the desire to pursue comfort in life at walang masama na maghangad ng kaginhawaan dito sa buhay na to. But the problem is, in our pursuit of comfort, we end up forgetting about taking up the cross and preaching Christ. Masyado na tayong nagpursue sa mga bagay na sa tingin natin may magbibigay sa atin ng comfort at satisfaction. Walang masama na magtrabaho ng maayos, maghanap buhay, mag-spend ng time para makapag-provide tayo sa ating mga pamilya. Pero kung ito ang ipinapalit natin sa pagpapahayag ng Ibanghelyo, kinakailangan natin mag-isip, mga kapwa Kristiyano, the top priority in our life is to glorify God. And we can glorify God by obeying His command of preaching Him and bearing the cross daily. Many Christians nowadays are too comfortable in their lives they are so suited to comfort, to earthly comfort, that they get discouraged at any whiff of persecution. Makaamoy lang sila ng persecution. Ha, ayoko na mag-share ng gospel. Ha, ang hirap maging kristyano. What happened to bearing our cross as we follow Christ? Do not 
Do not compromise the cross as you seek earthly comfort. Let us remember that our ultimate satisfaction and joy as believers can only be found in glorifying God in our lives. And many people will laugh at that. Eh, mga Kristiyano, babaw naman ang buhay nyo. But the Bible tells us that we are to expect this kind of opposition when we preach Christ. At kaya makaka somehow encouragement itong nababasa natin mula sa early church dahil yung mga nangyayari sa kanila ay maaari din mangyari sa atin. At ang encouragement nun, ang kanilang sinasamba na tagapagligtas ay tagapagligtas din natin. So despite opposition, we must continue to preach, to teach, to share about our Savior. And we must understand that if we rely on our own strength, then we cannot face opposition. We cannot face, we could not bear this fierce opposition alone. It is a good thing to know that God is with us. God is with us. For our last application, we must trust that God holds our lives as we proclaim Christ. Sino may hawak ng buhay natin? Tayo ba? E di kung tayo pala may hawak ng buhay natin, alam natin kung kailan tayo mamamatay. God is the one who holds our life. God who gave our life is the one who takes it away. He has a plan for each of us. What is our comfort whenever people oppose us as we preach the gospel? Our comfort is that God is in control. God holds the lives of His children. Kaya nga sabi sa kanta, di ba? Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Dahil tayo ay mga mananampalataya na hawak ng Diyos, wala makapagpipigil, wala makakakuha sa atin mula sa kanyang mga kamay. When the apostles were arrested and eventually released, what did the, the assembly do, the church? The assembly praised God because they knew that death was a possibility and now they have Peter and John telling them that they were released. Yun yung maalala natin sa previous lesson, di ba? Alam nila na anytime, maari hindi na bumalik si Peter at saka si John. But here they are. And they still continue to preach Christ. Hindi nila sinabi na, Okay, I use up that one life. Now I'm going to live up for myself. Hindi nila sinabi yun. They still continue to preach Christ. At mula nung sila ay napakawalan, doon sa kulungan, andun sila sa templo sumusunod sa pag-uutos ng Diyos. In the case of Peter and the apostles, dun sa binasa natin, they were miraculously released from prison. And God is gracious enough and merciful enough to prolong our lives here on earth. Whenever we experience deliverance from opposition, whenever we experience comfort, let us praise Him. But if it is God's plan for us to suffer and die, so be it. Bawat mananampalataya ay nararapat tanggapin ang ganyang katotohanan at hindi mahirap tanggapin para sa mananampalataya ang ganyang katotohanan kung siya ay naniniwala sa Diyos na may hawak ng lahat ng mga bagay. 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4 tells us, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Romans 8.28 tells us, And we know that all things work together for good. For every soul ba? No. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to His purpose. I-claim natin itong mga katotohanan na nabasa natin na meron tayong Diyos na nag-iingat sa atin. Meron tayong Diyos na may hawak ng lahat ng mga bagay at may magandang plano para sa atin. Hindi man, ang plano ng Diyos ay hindi man uh, ikatutuwa ng ating katawan. <laughs> hindi man ikatutuwa ng ating uh, isip. Maari maka-experience tayo ng suffering. Pero ang sabi ng Diyos, all things work together for good. Handa ba tayo? Handa ba tayong maghumarap sa mga opposition? The Bible tells us we ought to obey God rather than man. Marami yung mga simbahan ngayon ay nagsarahan na. Dahil lamang sa mga sinasabi ng tao, huwag kayong mag-preach, hindi sila nag-preach. Huwag kayong magtipon, hindi sila nagtipon. Inaresto pa yung pastor, isang pastor sa isang bansa. Inaresto sa harapan ng mga kanyang anak. Tinugis na parang kriminal. Dahil lamang siya ay nagministeryo sa kanyang mga miyembro. 
Hindi natin alam ang maaari mangyari sa atin, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ngayon na napakabilis na mga pangyayari. Pero alam natin na meron tayong Diyos na hawak ang ating mga buhay. You ought to obey God rather than man. What is our comfort? God holds our lives. Sabi ng isang hymn na kinakanta natin. Sige, kantahin natin. I hope you join me. Hindi ko kayo naririnig. But I miss singing with the saints. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood. But His presence goes before me and I'm covered with His blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Fellow believers, Let us take advantage of our short life and let us obey God. Whenever the rules of man oppose the rules of God, we know what to do. We must obey God. We ought to obey God rather than man. And as we do so, let us continually be yielded to the Holy Spirit and let us continue patterning our lives after our Lord and our Savior who is none other than Jesus Christ. Do not be surprised when humans oppose the good news about Christ. Pray for the persecuted brethren who chose to stand up for Christ. Bear the fierce opposition we preach. Uh, bear the fierce opposition as we preach Christ. And let us trust that God holds our lives as we proclaim Christ. We ought to obey God rather than men.